What is going on guys? My name is Tazzy Cookie and today we have a series premiere. It's going to be called Live Fire. I'm going to get uh, into the details about this series idea we have in mind here, but I have a co-host I want to introduce first, so you can go ahead and introduce yourself. What's up YouTube? My name is Kinetic and I'm going to be co-hosting this series. I have a YouTube channel that will be in the description and I post a lot of Battlefield and a little bit of other games. So, uh, All right. Yeah, let's do this. All right, so let me give a quick detailed uh, description of what we're going to do with the series called Live Fire. It's where myself and Kinetic get together and discuss certain topics that have been brought up to our uh, attention through either gaming or also our followers. So make sure to tweet us topic ideas for the following episode. And we're basically just going to go in and give our opinions 100%, you know, Everything thrown off the table and our complete honest opinion on any given topic for each and uh, every episode in the future. Today's topic just how it happens to be Battlefield 3. Now, what we're going to do is we're basically just going to talk about it and give our overall experience of the whole entire game itself. And I'm going to let you go ahead, Ken Kinetic, and basically start us off with uh, your opinions and some thoughts. I know you released a video not too long ago, and uh, you have some mixed emotions about the game, so I'm going to let you go ahead and take this one. All right. Well, uh, basically, even though I love Battlefield, uh, this game, and I know a lot of other people feel the same way as I do, although about different things within the game, this game for me was a mixed bag I'm not necessarily upset about the fact that it didn't replicate BF2 100%. Mm -hmm. I also don't expect it to be exactly the same as Bad Company 2 because that part of the Battlefield series is completely separate. It's a whole different game. Um, I have a lot of issues with balance in terms of uh, skill-based gameplay, uh, map making, what DICE has done in terms of patching the game, which is partly EA's fault. Yeah, right. So, I mean, like, and basically, just to cut yeah. in right quick, is I, I kind of have the same feeling as well. Um, the when the game was first released, sh sure, there's a few issues with it, but I found that the community kind of uh, complained to the point where the DICE had to be like, okay, well, we have to do something about this weapon and this weapon. Uh, so they basically patched some weapons that they didn't really need to be patched, in my opinion. Well, for me... Um from where I'm sitting, I remember a few weapons specifically, and I don't know ex the exact number of times that they've been patched, but the AK, the F2000, the SCAR H, and the G3 really stood out for me as weapons that have been patched repeatedly because someone will bitch that it is too overpowered, so they nerf it, and then everyone complains that it's not effective enough, so they buff it, and it get happens patch after patch after patch. Meanwhile, they could be doing things like fixing the bugs. They could spend more time on that. And obviously, it's not going to take you long to tweak a weapon's stats. Mm -hmm. um, definitely not as much time as it would take to recode something or fix a bug. But it feels to me like they wasted too much time doing pointless shit and not enough time actually fixing the game. I mean, how long did we have to put up with people running around with the M26 Dart because yeah. they wouldn't just release a patch. EA has enough money to do that. It's not a problem for EA. DICE just has to code it correctly, and they have nothing to worry about, but EA is too cheap to do it. And if DICE wasn't fiddling with a bunch of pointless stuff, then they might not have screwed up that one line of code that says M26 can now do 10,000 damage if you attach a heavy barrel to your assault, or, yeah, That's heavy a barrel and underslung to your assault rifle. Yeah. Exactly. So it makes no sense some of the things that they do, and it, it almost feels like they're a bunch of amateurs going into their engine and the way they've programmed the game and changing stuff without knowing what it actually does, and that's where the problems pop up mm -hmm. and bugs get created that did not exist before, and it screws the whole game up. So, I mean, do you think it gets to a point where um, a developer, you know, hears feedback from the community when they've already released a video game, but they come to the point where they're like, you know what, the video game's already fucking released. I don't really have time to sit back and fix this one weapon that you guys are all bitching about because we're working on a next, uh, you know, next video game in the series. Do you think they kind of have that mind frame at, to a degree? Well, I don't expect them to keep changing weapons. I think that the weapon balance at the moment isn't perfect. 
Um, there are a lot of issues that I have with the damage models on certain guns, but it's about as close as we're going to get to perfect. I mean, they did nerf the M16 slightly. I don't think they should have changed the M416 in that same patch, but I mean, they have made changes to certain guns that they did need to. Um, what all I want them to do is stop patching it only when DLC comes out, and then we could have actually had a real patch that would have lasted us a few months till BF4 comes out that would have fixed the bugs. I mean, there's stuff that is happening, like running into a train in thin air and just randomly dying, or getting thrown into walls that has not been patched. Mm -hmm. They have obviously made no effort to patch it. Yeah. And uh, I just, it almost feels like the game is being run by a bunch of amateurs <laughs> at a certain point. Yeah, it does to a point. You're right, though. Um, I guess I guess my view on the whole game and, and as a whole, um, over well, overall, I think I, I enjoyed it. Um, the campaign was fun, in my opinion. But online, if we're just focusing online for the first uh, Live Fire episode here, um, I, I, I agree. You know, I found that there are some things that need to be touched and, and fixed. And they just basically ignored it, and then they made a DLC content, and they made another one, and just completely, someone dropped the ball to all together. Um, one thing that really pisses me off the most, though, about the game is the net coding. What do you think about that? I mean, are you, I just fucking hate it when I'm going around a corner, and, and I die when I'm already around the corner. I, I understand, I used to be on console, but obviously I'm, I'm on PC now. I understand a 64-man server can have an effect on netcoding and, and lag and, and compensation like that. Does that piss you off, or is it just me? Well, at this rate, we're actually going to have working netcode by the time Battlefield 6 comes out, because they have made progress. <laughs> it's, not as, it's not as bad as it was in BC2, where, you're here, where you uh, hear the guy's head ding, and nothing happens. Um where you see blood, nothing happens. That happens a lot less frequently in this game, but the main problem that they've had in this game is people registering shots when they shouldn't, or you don't register shots when you should. They need to fix that so that hitboxes actually function correctly, people aren't on your screen when they've actually disappeared around a right, wall, exactly. and are 10 feet around the wall. Yeah. And uh, it's especially a problem in competitive gameplay and uh, which is something that I'm especially concerned about as a competitive gamer um, because it not only screws up matches between teams that are in the same country or the same area, but you also cannot have the community grow as a whole because it's very challenging to have North American teams play teams from Europe it's extremely challenging to have teams from South America, especially there are a lot of teams from Brazil that do play uh, against North American teams. And let me tell you, the North American teams despise Brazilian players because they have ridiculously high ping, and that's annoying on any game, but especially on Battlefield 3 where ping means absolutely jack shit, it can completely screw up a match because you're getting shot around corners every game, they're lagging like a boss Jumping through every bullet you shoot at them. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, another problem is not only can you not have com very competitive, well-played matches between North American and European teams, um, but also because you don't get the opportunity to play against each other a lot, there isn't a lot of community aspect to it because the European teams want to talk shit to you, North American teams get mad and talk shit back because there has never been a point where a European team such as Eyeballers can play a North American team such as Nexus or Rival on an even playing field. There is no huge tournament that is going to sponsor, uh, be, have sponsors, and these teams can have the money to fly to a LAN tournament and play each other on the same connection. And... Um, it's, all, it's very challenging because of this to have an even playing field where you have the same ping and play against right. each other. And it's even frustrating trying to play something like ESL versus because as soon as they find out you're American, they want to put in a no result, they don't want to play the match, and if they do play the match, they're going to sh uh, talk shit to you the whole time. And there's just a, a real divide between Europe and America in the competitive scene because of 
just a simple thing like a ping issue, which could be fixed so easily if DICE actually cared about it. Yeah, I mean, there's no real even playing field to say, oh, I'm better. Well, no, you're not, because you live here, you live there. So um, I guess I'm not really familiar with the whole, uh, you know, going pro or playing clan versus clan. But like you said, I mean, you wouldn't really know who's better, I guess, if you are on land. You know, if you get to some type of, like, they hold an event, but unfortunately they don't do anything like that for Battlefield 3, do they? There have been LAN events and small tournaments mm -hmm. before. Um, there was actually just one, I believe, in Atlanta. And uh, a couple of very good teams, Nexus and V2, played each other. I believe Nexus won. Um, a guy named Brett FX was actually there and uh, giving updates on the match, and it was actually really good. When there are land tournaments, there can be there can be an awesome community, and um, even the public community does have an interest in that to a certain extent. Um, Counter Strike is a great example of this. NIP, one of the most dominant teams in Counter Strike of all time. Uh, they actually just played in, I believe it was season 14 of ESEA. They beat the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, beat the uh, one of the top North American teams right now, Complexity. And there are actually a great amount of people who give a shit about yeah, that. Yeah. But when you take two teams from BF3 and they play a competitive match against each other, LAN or not, even if it's for a championship, even if there are prizes, no one knows who these teams are. No one cares about them. I think the only, the biggest amount of pub publicity that any team in, in the BF3 competitive scene has gotten, uh, there are actually two teams. One would be Punchline, which is Jika's team, and that's because the guy has insane aim <laughs> and uh, has gotten a, quite a good amount of recognition for it. Um, actually, I'd have to say there are three teams. The other team would have to be Nexus, mm -hmm. and unfortunately a lot of their recognition has simply come from the fact that they were in a match where Rival got DDoS, and Nexus got a lot of blame for that, and of course, the number one team that people know is Rival. And that is, I mean, they did have a great amount of recognition before, but the reason why they got a lot of their recognition was from X Factor being on the team. Despite the fact that X Factor was not a huge contributor to that team in the 5v5 infantry category, um, just simply because of the fact that he had rival in his name, they got a huge amount of recognition. And it's it's kind of annoying to me as a competitive player that the only real recognition that people can get is from someone on the team posting pub videos on YouTube and getting a great amount of subscribers. People don't actually care about the competitive scene they care about the one guy on the team who has a hundred thousand subscribers and makes money off YouTube. Yeah, it's like they're almost using him as like his front boy, like the poster boy for their clan or their team, I should say. Um, but I guess my overall opinion about the community in Battlefield Three is um, it's okay, but I guess it's hard. It's hard to explain. Like I love it at times, but I also hate it other times. I find that there's a lot of complaining that goes on. Like, if you jump online, you'll see people say, Oh my god, I just got killed by the AEK. You know, they're like, they're the gay EK. Like, why are you using the gay EK and all this shit? And uh, I find that it seems like there's a lot more Call of Duty fanboys jumping over to Battlefield 3. And they're basically just playing the game style of Call of Duty and trying to bring it to Battlefield 3. And it's not really working out in their favor. So then they try to, like, compensate by complaining about weapons or how they died. I don't know, that's just me. I don't know. Yeah, well, from where I'm standing on this, you know, from my point of view, it's not even all Call of Duty players. I know that there are a lot of COD players that have come over to this series, but I find that a lot of, if not half or most of the complaining, actually comes from Battlefield veterans themselves, which is what annoys me, because I'm not one of the people who's just like, Oh, blame it on COD. The game got popular and it's invaded by COD players. <laughs> I find that a lot of it is actually from people who have played since Battlefield 2 or earlier. And I think a lot of that is because, number one, they don't like the way COD players have, uh, I guess you can almost say, invaded the game. Because the game has become, or not even just COD players, just gamers in general who did not play and Battlefield And adapted before. the game, you know, actually starting to exactly. become good. Yeah, I agree. 
Yes. We'll, we'll just refer to them as people who haven't played Battlefield before. All right. <laughs> These people have come into the game, and Battlefield players are pissed off about the way these guys have made their addition to the community or the way they play the game. They're also pissed off about the way EA has handled this game. They're pissed off about the way DICE is EA's bitch and has to do what they say. Basically, yeah. makes the game the way EA wants it. And so they... Um, they were fine with Battlefield before and did not bitch a lot. And I think the community has been way better than this, even just when BF3 was launched. But now, all the Battlefield veterans are starting to get pissed off. And the second part of it is that they the game has changed. We cannot deny that. Of the course, game has of course. Changed. Yeah, it has. I'm not going to say if it's for better or for worse in terms of the way they've changed up vehicle and infantry balance, etc., whether it's become more cod like etc. Mm -hmm. But they cannot adapt to the game. And because it's not the Battlefield 2 clone with better graphics that they wanted, they don't know how to handle it. And so, I mean, a perfect example of this would be the fact that a lot of people that have banned me from their servers or accused me of using macros in my videos or hacking, the, these are people who have played Battlefield since 1942. Right. They are avid Battlefield fans, and they are not used to the way the game has changed. The pace has picked up. They can't it's adapt not to the old yeah. vehicles anymore. Exactly. They can't adapt to the and change. You're right. Yeah. Exactly, and in addition to the fact that they just simply can't handle it, and so they're getting stomped when they might not have before. They also have a false sense of superiority because of how far back they've gone in the Battlefield uh, series. So if they think you're hacking, they will simply say, I know a hack when I see one because I've been playing Battlefield for so long. I've been playing Battlefield since 1942 as well. I've played every single installment of Battlefield that has come to PC. So, yeah. I'm not... It's a little, exactly. bit, of, it's a little bit of both, uh, I guess both contributions it's the, the the new people who are coming into the series and, and are trying to adapt and overcome and, and they're actually starting to play well but at the same spectrum it's also you know the the hardcore battlefield 3 vets that are also contributing to the fire is that that's what i'm kind of getting know. at here um what i what i exactly. uh, told from you and looking yeah, at it now i, I guess 100 yeah, i agree with that with no i agree with that um yeah that makes a lot of sense uh but let's okay so let me just get back on topic here um so my overall opinion once again is that i like it i'm looking forward to battlefield 4 and I, I hope they do make the necessary changes um that they should have to make and hopefully they listen to the community uh, because we're all obviously telling them what what to do and stuff like that um but i want to get back to uh the time frame here and we have something that we want to express to you guys and give you guys um an opinion of what we're going to do it's an idea for the series. It's called Pull the Pin. Now, basically what this means is that I'm going to come up with, an, a question, with a question to ask Kinetic, and he does the same thing for me, and we have 30 seconds to give our opinion on that topic, and then, you know, the grenade, ex grenade explodes. So, basically, um, I'm going to let, let Kinetic ask me um, the question, but before I do that, I want to let you guys know that each series, and each episode, rather, I want you guys to tweet us, um, some ideas or questions that you would want us to ask one another, myself and Kinetic. So um, I'm going to look at the clock here, Kinetic, and you can ask me the question, and I'm going to try to give my opinion <laughs> as fast as possible and not make myself look like a fucking idiot. So, All right, so my question for you on this episode would be, because I know a lot of people uh, have a very negative opinion of this side of the community, what are your thoughts in 30 seconds or less on the Battlefield 3 competitive community? My opinions on the Battlefield 3 competitive community would definitely be a positive but a negative, like love-hate relationship. One, like we touched base a little bit on, about in the episode tonight, was that uh, I feel like they get this state of mind where they think they're better than everyone else that are just regular uh, fanboys and Battlefield 3 players. Um, but my overall opinion, I would have to say, I respect them for what they do and what they are trying to do for the community because sometimes we kind of take it uh, the wrong way. That's plain and simple. All right, fair enough. Do you, do you agree or is do you think that's a good enough answer? Well, 
You know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say the Battlefield Three competitive community that, uh, you know, I don't want to say on behalf of them that we are superior to the pub community. But you know, I, I think it more boils down to the fact that competitive players uh, have had more experience with games where it's extremely skill based, and they want the same balance in this game. And when we see pub players bitching about something like the M16, it, it just sort of it just sort of comes across as someone who doesn't know what they are talk what they're talking about gotcha. at all. So, okay, all right, fair enough. You know, and then there's a lot of anger and hate, and it just it, you can't have a good discussion with someone. You know, I explained this earlier. Mm -hmm. People just want to be like, your opinion's wrong. Fuck you. You know, I think if everyone sat down and actually had a discussion, it would be a lot different. People's opinions of each other would improve. I think that 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 basically works for everything in life if you really look at it that way. Um, yeah, right before we started the series, or the first episode, me and Kinect were like, no matter what we say or what we do throughout the episodes, man, we're going to be still friends, right? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> all right, so my question to you for Pull the Pin is, at 30 seconds or less, what is your overall uh, opinion of Rising Storm? Because I know you play that a little bit. Great game. A uh, few bugs that... Uh, you know, every game has bugs, but the difference between this game and something like Battlefield is I feel like Tripwire actually has the ability and will actually listen to the community to work towards improving the game and fixing the bugs because not only do are they a great developer in my opinion, but they also handle their own games. They're not someone's bitch and they're not the slave of a big corporation. Gameplay is awesome. If you guys have not checked it out, you definitely should go check it out on Steam, Rising Storm, and download that Boom. show. All right, so there you go. The, the kinetics... Answer to Rising Storm. I would have to agree with you, dude. I think it's a great game. Um, it's a very realistic type of video game. If you're not used to that type of uh, you know, genre or hardcore mode, a lot of people dislike hardcore mode for no particular reason, Battlefield 3, in my opinion. Uh, you have the advantage of killing your enemy with one shot, and they also have the advantage as, as well. So I don't know why people hate on that. Um, but I really do like Rising Storm. Uh, I think it's great. Um, but uh, anyways... Also, another thing that we're going to do in Live Fire is a community spotlight. So each week we're going to try to take, uh, you know, someone's video submission or even a link or, or someone leaving us a message or something, checking out someone's video that they put a lot of effort into, and then we're going to put it up on the screen and talk about it a little bit and give our, uh, our opinions about it. And I think that's a great way for us to kind of give someone someone's channel a little bit more attention and maybe some more views and maybe a subscriber or two. Um, and also, we're going to give away a Battlefield 3 uh, redeem, redeem code, so you can get the Battlefield 3 for free. And all you got to do is tweet me or Kinetic and say hashtag live fire. And um, we're going to put those names in a hat and we're going to do a random draw. So that's basically it for the first episode of Live Fire. I hope you guys enjoy it. We, we have a lot of things that are on the board we're going to try to get through. We're going to have some guest hosts, some maybe some guest appearances, maybe Sentinel, uh, Mr. Assault, who knows, you know, maybe even Thready, but I don't want to go, I don't want to reach too far because we want to start from the <laughs> bottom, you know what I'm saying? Um, but if you don't have anything else to say, Kinetic, I think we can end it. Yeah, definitely. Um, if you guys want to, leave a comment, tell me how much of a fucking idiot COD fanboy I am for uh, <laughs> having any negative opinions on Battlefield. Yeah. That's totally cool. You're entitled to your opinion, just like me. And uh, I'll look forward to reading those comments. Also, um, we're thinking about doing every other episode on each person's channel. So, for example, next week would be on my channel. That way we can uh, get both of our subscriber bases involved in the show and make sure that it actually gets some publicity and gets noticed. And it will open it up for uh, a lot more people to enjoy it. Hell yeah. Um, so yeah. Hell yeah. That also rem reminded me... Um, Leave a comment below with the topic you want us to talk about next week. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it and hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode of Live Fire. I'm Taz the Cookie and I'm signing out. <laughs>